What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. So the last few months you've been seeing me fish off a different boat, at least a different boat than Big Red. Big Red, guys, we had to let go after a big family discussion because I came across a deal of a lifetime. Now I did have to purchase this boat, but it was an opportunity that I just couldn't pass up and the family agreed. So that's what we did. We purchased the Ranger 2360 Bay Boat and guys, I couldn't be happier. Now, it was a little sad because we had a lot of sweat equity and a lot of money put in red. Me and Chris worked on that for at least six months, really uh, just getting it back to her, her glory days. Maybe not as good, but we did customize it to where we really thought was beneficial for our fishing needs. But that's okay, because we could do the same thing with Ranger Danger. I don't have a name for it. If you guys have suggestions, comment below. Maybe we can get her named. But anyway, today we're going to do the walkthrough, because a lot of you guys have been asking me about the boat. And this is a vessel we're going to be fishing off of for the next two or three years. So come along. Let's take a look. Take a closer look. I'm going to show you some of the specs, talk a little bit about it, and we'll jump right in. Let's go. The first thing I'm going to state is the obvious is the boat is 23 foot 6 inches long and when it's on the trailer it's approximately 29 feet 6 inches long. So it's a fairly large boat but it has a very wide beam. I believe the beam is 102 inches so it produces great stability. A lot of people can walk to one side of the boat and you're not going to see that yee-yaw type effect that you'll get on the boats. But I do like that, the fact that it does have a very, very wide beam. Now, if you take a look up here on the, the deck, I mean, this cooler's kind of in the way. Let's go ahead and move that over. You'll see that the deck of the boat is very, very uh, spacious. So you can fish, you could fish two to three anglers up here and not have to worry about really bumping in, into each other. It's got a spot for a, a seat here that you can remove, almost like a bass boat would. I mean, it is made by Ranger, guys. If you don't know, Ranger actually specialized in bass and freshwater boats. Uh, they really were popular among professional bass anglers uh, not so long ago. Moving up here to the bow of the boat, you have the Minn Kota Riptide. So this is pretty cool, guys. It's a self-deploying trolling motor. You've probably seen that on some of my videos. It does have its pros and cons. When it works, it's great. When it has problems, uh, you want to pull out your hair but overall I've been pretty satisfied with it we've had a few little hiccups but nothing too crazy I haven't really had to throw my anchor too much but this is the anchor locker one thing that I can tell you about the anchor locker is you have to have a small anchor guys so I think that's where they kind of went wrong this is a very small anchor and we had to downgrade just so y'all know by the way and this ain't a plug this is the fortress anchor it's an aluminum anchor again I haven't ever had to put that in the water, so it's been nice having that, that trolling motor, that GPS spot lock. Now, up here in this storage compartment, it's not really a storage compartment. It's actually technically a fish box. That's heavy. All right, so it's actually technically a fish box. This is where you want to throw all your fish. For us, I don't like putting the fish in my boat because uh, I don't like the slime and the stuff going into the um, hole and stuff all the time. However, this is perfect for my cast nets. It fits in there perfectly with my basket. I close that up and it's out of the way. One cool thing, like you see my cooler right here, but Ranger integrated a cooler up here, which could actually work as a bait well as well. So you can have this designed however you feel pleased, but check this out. I actually like the integrated cooler. If you aren't familiar with these, these are the little locks like on the Engel coolers. But I found that this cooler will hold ice for about two days. So it works. And it's fairly substantial too. You're not gonna be able to fill that thing up. The Ranger has lockers on both sides. This size, side, it has a rod locker. So check this out. And you'll see in here that it can accommodate up to eight or 10 rods. I put my gaff in here along with dry, you know, dry storage. You have your fishing tackle. It also has a fan right here to help remove any type of excess moisture, which I think is pretty, pretty good. On this side, same thing, but minus the, the rod locker aspect. So this would be a great place to put your stuff you want to keep dry. 
in our situation we have a bunch of things we got perina fish food and cameras and everything so it works now down here in the floor they actually this was pretty clever but they didn't make it deep enough in my opinion so you have to have a small bucket this is actually your cast net area uh where, what's designed for your cast net so that little area recessed area is actually for your bucket now the bucket has to be small because this won't close if it's not small. So if you have one of the little short cast net buckets, you're gonna be fine. You got the front seat right here, two-tone vinyl, very nice. It's a smaller seat. That's one thing that I really liked on the Action Craft was it's a lot larger and you could pretty much fit two people on there if you wanted to. But what's really neat about this is this opens up. This is for all you ladies. And I do have a lot of ladies in my life with my two daughters, my wife, grandmother, and all that. Look at that, TP sitting there waiting on you. However, I got the NOCO Gen, uh, Gen Pro lithium charger back here. Now check out what's cool about this. So this just folds right up like that, out of the way, you just push that down. Now don't mind all the mess here because I'm not really too prepared right now. But after you remove all these life vests, you have the John. Now when the girls need to go to the restroom, they can go right here. We got some biodegradable toilet paper and it all works. So pretty nice in here. Everything stays really dry. You can get to your electronics if you need to. I also keep my first aid kit in here. So like uh, this right here, survive wear. This never had any moisture on it. it stays really, really dry. And we also, a lot of times, will put our camera gear and stuff on this right here, like when we're running and stuff. And uh, that works really well as well. It's also got some vent fans down here that I could turn on um, back here behind the, uh, on the dash. Now you could get this thing, the boat, by the way, weighs 3,400 pounds. If you add the T-top, it's 3,700 pounds. This is a really nice T-top, guys. It's all fiberglass, uh, it's not you know canvas, so it's gonna last forever. It also has four integrated speakers, and these are the Infinity speakers. They work really, really well. It sounds really, really good. You can get the powder coat package, which this is all white powder coat. Uh, also, I have the front light here that I could turn on that really illuminates the whole front deck, and it does a really, really good job. Along with that, it has for customization and style these colored lights and they change they're multicolored. so they're right here and they're all around the t-top but on the t-top itself you have a ton of grab areas you got here you got here um, along with your rod holders up here so these are your outrigger type rod holders so if you're trolling down in the keys or wherever and you're fishing for mahi or pelagics these are good rod holders for that what I really like though, is all the recessed rod holders along the entire side of the boat. You got one, two, three, three on each side right there. Here's your cup holders on both sides, here and there. So coming back, you got your big old captain's chair, like two seats here. These fold up and down. At first, I didn't know how I really liked them. I like the bench seat personally, but these are really good because you push these up and if you want to stand, you got nice back support, you know, or butt support, I should say. Now, if you want to sit, you can push this down, jump up here, and then you're cruising. So it's actually very convenient. All right, guys, so this is the GPS Map XSB Garmin. I can't say enough good things about this unit. It has the down finder, the sonar, um, the chirp, everything that you need in a GPS to really locate and hone in on the bottom dwelling fish. It is super powerful. I can't tell you how many fish and spots it's already found us, and I love it. Now, I did get my steering wheel professionally wrapped this time um, from Hunter. He's on Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram, I follow him. You can check him out. I also posted a picture and shouted him out. Thank you for that nice work that you did there. Up here, guys, we got a horn. We got our nav lights. It's got twin bilges. It's got the interior lights. It's got underwater lights. 
for the back of the motor, which is really nice. The vent fan I was telling you about. We also got a rear, rear water wash down. Um, all your overhead lights. And then of course your fuses are along the top of here. So if you blow or if your fuse um, pushes out, you just push these in and then you're back in, you're, you're operating again. I don't know what Ranger was thinking when they put analog gauges on here, but I gotta upgrade them. We need digital. So I'm probably gonna be removing all of these and putting one digital box right here. You got your Linko trim tabs up and down dual power poles now guys if you don't know power poles are awesome shallow water you don't have to touch an anchor i got the twin 10 foot poles and they're beautiful they do the job really really well now one thing that i can tell you up here the boat lacks storage on the console it does have a fairly large console up here that you could put things up which we do use a lot but up here they eliminated most of our storage by putting this board, uh, which I don't get because I took it out and it's all hollow. So they could have actually made this to where we can make this a functional space. Instead, they just used the whole thing for the radio. I, I feel like it was kind of an ornery process. Whoever did that should be slapped. Down here, we got a big old battery storage compartment. What I like about this, check out this diagram. So you got all your diagram right here on how everything is. And we got our beautiful Rebel Lithium batteries down here, guys. They are awesome. They seem so far, they've been really, really good. I've been testing them out. The trolling motors never died on the water thus far, knock on wood. But the diagram is cool how everything is wired. There's no questioning where, how things are going or how things are wired, where they go. And thus far, this has been beneficial when uh, swapping things out in here. So you can also get to your rural pump in here. So if you wanted to work on your pump and you want to turn on your trolling motor batteries, there's a little switch in here. These are the Rebel batteries I was talking about. All very functional. I like this big space right here. It's easy to work in. So another thing that it does, having those batteries in the center of the boat, is it just balances everything out. A lot of boats put them in the back or put them in the front. I think that it's just a nice place for them. I also want to let you know this has hydraulic trim so or it has hydraulics and it has the uh the trim so you could trim up your motor when you're running shallow if you want to you know figure that figure out that sweet spot where the boat really likes to run that's a great uh, function or feature to have on the boat you got this nice step area right here so when you're sitting you can put your feet right here and it has sea deck and all that good stuff as you probably already noticed it has a huge big old windshield this is beneficial when it starts to rain or if it's real windy, you're not getting blistered by the water. It actually is very nice. Now it can impede your uh, sight sometimes. So sometimes um, that is a problem. I notice that it does mess with, if, I, if it gets a lot of water spots, it can mess with uh, your, your line of sight. So one thing that I really, really like on this boat are these right here, little side cushions. And I find myself, so like right here, you see how my leg, when I'm fishing, I'll lean up against it like this. And I notice that I do it a lot to gain leverage or whatever it is. It's very comfortable having these. I didn't know how I'd feel about them at first, but man, I wouldn't change those at all. My next boat will have them. Um, it has a 40 gallon live well. It has a recirc and twin live wells. So very, very deep. If you're watching my videos, you've seen me dump snapper. I'm talking 15 snapper and keep them alive. Two keeper grouper. <laughs> I just got along with my bait and they stay alive the entire time. Now the switch to turn, to turn on your live well, you just pop open this box and you got your live well one, live well two, research and uh, your lights, live well lights. And yet this is also your battery switch for where you can turn on and turn off the boat battery power. So one thing that you see that there is no shortage of is rod holders. Check out this, I got four on the behind the seats, two down below, two down below. Check this out, another five up at the top. And then the three on the sides, like I'd already showed you, so there's no shortage, plus the rod locker, you could put 
two dozen rods is sometimes we need every single rod holder because we got a lot of rods, we bring a lot of rods. So moving back, moving aft here, you have, move this bucket out of the way, you have this little area right here. Now this is cool guys because it opens up to your pumps. Don't mind the mess. It opens up to your pumps so you can easily remove any type of grass out of your strainers or just maintenance your pumps. I hate crawling through small spaces. Seating, seating is a little interesting, but check this out. This baby pops up and check out how big that, that seat is. You got your cup holders, works beautifully. And again, if you need to get to the back of the boat or you need to get to any of your pumps, check this out. Get to your power pole pumps, which are back there. You got everything that you need in here, really, to take care of, uh, you know, to get down in here. I've actually been down in this hole physically, changing out things already. So this folds down. Once you're down, once it's done, fold this down. One thing that I could tell you that's a pro or a con with this setup is that whoever's sitting right here, if you got your bait well full, a lot of times you'll receive splashing out of the bait well, even with these closed and locked down, and they hit your customers or whoever's in the back here. Now, if it's just that family member you're mad at, you loosen one of these and put them back here and hit the gas. <laughs> uh, other things, we got a little storage area here. Now, this area really gets wet. You can also use it, it has a, a wash down right here, a hookup. Uh, but I just throw some leader and stuff in there. It gets very wet in there. On this side, by the way, this is your freshwater wash down. If you pull this up, you got your little spigot right there. You got your little spigot, you turn that on, uh, or you turn your switch on at the dash, and then you can spray down your boat with the freshwater wash down. There's another little side uh, storage compartment. It's not very big, but we, again, we keep leader in there, lots of soft steel. Um, and on that side, we have a little, a really cool area actually. Uh, you could put tackle in here, tackle boxes, but again, it gets a little wet guys. And I don't, I don't keep a lot in there cause I don't like when stuff gets wet. We powered, this baby's powered by Yamaha 250 show. Now it's got a 25 inch shaft, a big old four blade prop. This baby will move. So, it's actually recommended to have a 300, but with the higher performance show, I find that my top speeds are 52 miles per hour and my cruising speed uh, around 45, 4,800 RPMs, you're 36 to 38 miles an hour. And that's plenty fast for us. So with the trim tabs and everything else, she, she rides very smooth and I have no complaints with what we got. We also got a swim platform back here. This has been very cool. We went scallop. Ooh. We went scalloping this year and this was very nice to be able to get in and out of the uh, water. Everybody really enjoyed that. Um, overall, I've been very satisfied guys. There's not a whole lot of complaints. I mean, I've been on the boat for four months. I think it's gonna be a very good thing. Now you're gonna ask how much does this boat cost? You could build the boat different ways, but if you build it just like this, I, I spec'd it out, it was $116,000. So it's not too, too bad. Um, but I'm sure you could buy them used. I looked in the used market, there's not a whole lot. So if you get one and you got one with a low, low hours or something, I would snatch it up, especially in this crazy boat market. But overall, that's what we're riding in, guys. It's the Ranger Danger. Let me know about some names below. If you like this video, comment below, subscribe if you haven't already, turn on some notifications and hit that thumbs up button. A big thanks to Chris for helping me film. Go check out his channel, I'll link it down below. And if you guys like again what you see, let me know. Have you had a ranger? What's the pros and cons? What do you think? Hey, until next time guys, we'll see you on the water.